What's buzzing everyone? I'm LaPortia and welcome to Up and Out. So Beyonce is hitting the big screen y'all. She officially released a trailer for her upcoming film called Renaissance, a film by Beyonce. And baby, not baby, but baby, I can't wait to get dressed up and to go see it. Just look at it. In the trailer, we see Blue Ivy Carter praying and stretching, Rumi and Sir playing around. We see Honey Balenciaga and Amari. Those are some of her background dancers. This is going to be epic. Now, before I left, I told you that Beyonce was out here increasing sales for small businesses on Etsy. Well, she just completed her last US show of the Renaissance World Tour on October 1st, so yesterday, and according to multiple credible sources, Beyonce has generated more than $4.5 billion for the US economy. Yes, I definitely said $4.5 billion. B generated billions for the economy as a whole. That's big, big, big B business, all right? As a matter of fact, it's Olympic business. What you mean, Portia? You probably like, what you mean it's Olympic business? Well, she quite literally generated as much money for our economy as the 2008 Olympics did for Beijing. Speaking of Olympians that make history, well, you know we can't have that conversation without mentioning the one and only Simone Biles. Every time I mention my girl Simone, she's always doing something else that we've never seen before. And guess what? Today is no different. <laughs> Because this past weekend, our girl Simone Biles became the first woman to land the Eurochenko double pike vault at an international competition. Now, this isn't Simone's first time landing this flip in a competition. She did it during the 2021 Classics, I believe. However, doing it at an international competition is when I when it really, really counts for the history books. You know what I mean? Listen, I didn't know what that was, so I did some research, and this is what I found. The Eurocheco part is when you do a round off onto the springboard and then a backflip off the vault. All right, I, I can't even do a cartwheel, y'all. I'm just gonna keep it real with you. And in Simone's case, she did two pike flips in the air, which means her legs stay straight. Now, what makes this so dangerous is that if she doesn't flip her body around in time for the second flip, she can land on her neck. I mean, and literally it could be deadly injuries. Yes, that's how difficult this move is. And it's now called the Biles 2 because my girl also made history once. <laughs> she is the only woman in history to land it. There's been a few male gymnasts that have landed it, but she, my girl, this woman continues to break barriers and I'm going to continue to cheer for her. Go girl. <laughs> California Governor Gavin Newsom is appointing LaFonza Butler to complete the Senate term of the late Dianne Feinstein. Listen, Butler is currently the president of Emily's List, which my guest will tell us more about. She is also the only black female senator in Congress right now. And just the third in U.S. history. Listen, y'all, we've got to do better, America. We really do. As you all know, Feinstein passed away last week at the age of 90. She was the longest serving female senator ever in the U.S., all right? And joining me today to talk more about this historic news is the Advocate Channel's Alex Hooper. All right, today I'm joined by the Advocate Magazine's digital director, Alex Cooper. This is your second time being on my show and I'm so happy to have you back. I feel like we always have a good time. And today we are talking about something that is historic. All right, so listen, I told all of the information in the beginning, but tell me, who is LaFonza Butler? For those of us who may not be that familiar. Yeah, so LaFonza Butler has been tapped to be the next senator of California, for California. Um, she was tapped by Gavin Newsom to replace the um, the late Senator Dianne Feinstein, who passed away late last week. Um, so she is now going to be the senator. She's replacing Senator Feinstein in the Senate. Um, yeah. I love that. I mean, this is really big news. But tell me, why is this seat so important to the Senate? Like, what's the big deal around this specific seat? I mean, to be fair, the Democrats have a slim majority in the Senate, so every seat really matters. Again, this is California, so the seats have always been historically, for the most part, um, Democrat for the last several years, decades even. Um, 
So this is just important to maintain the Democrat major- majority in the Senate for the Democrats. What is, you know, what is the LGBTQIA community really excited about <gasps> as it pertains to LaFonza Butler? Yeah, so Butler is going to be the first LGBTQ plus person of color in the Senate. I mean, this is massive. Um, she also has a background working for progressive causes. Um, Emily's List, for instance, works for Democratic candidates who are for abortion rights and abortion access. So she has a massive just background in politics and as um, the president of a labor union, um, just as a Democratic strategist. I mean, her resume is pretty intense when it comes to politics. I mean, so basically what you're saying is, you know, Senator Butler, the resume is stacked. She is definitely prepped and prepared for this Senate seat. You know, she deserves it. And like you said, she is the first black, out black woman Senate uh, senator. And, and I mean, this is a really, really big deal. This is a big deal for the black community. This is a big deal for the LGBT, uh, LGBTQ plus community. And I just really see great things happening here. You know, um, I hate I hate that it and Alex, I feel like you can agree. I hate that it takes so long. We're still seeing so many firsts as it pertains to the LGBTQIA plus community and the African-American community and the Hispanic community. And we want to really get to the point where we're seeing like 10s, 11s, 12s. We, we shouldn't still be on the first, but we're happy that, you know, we're at least breaking barri- bar- barriers. OK, now tell me what happens to Barbara Lee's campaign? Yeah, so Barbara Lee is currently a member of the House of Representatives. Um, she represents Oakland um, in California. and. Newsom, before Feinstein had passed away, he promised that he would fill a seat if if Feinstein's seat seat did become available and he would have to appoint someone, that he would appoint a Black woman. And many people thought that Barbara Lee should have been the choice. She's already running to... Um, rep- to fill Feinstein's seat, because remember, Butler is only appointed until Feinstein's term ends. So that's next. That's next year, twenty twenty four. Um, okay. so the election, you know, there's, you know, a, a highly contested Senate race already happening. Um, so Lee's campaign, Lee's supporters have just complained that Newsom should have selected her and not anyone else for the for the seat. However, Newsom also said that he wasn't going to appoint someone who was already running for the seat. Gotcha. Um, and I do kind of understand. I understand the thought process there. Now, I need to know, like, what has the be- reaction been um, since they didn't appoint Barber? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the human rights groups, um, advocacy groups, they they support Butler's um, the choice of Butler to be the next senator. To replace Feinstein for now, um, you know, again, her her track record is just progressive politics, progressive activism. So human rights groups are definitely happy with this choice. Um, and the thing is that yep. <laughs> I said it's definitely yeah. giving California, right? Like her track record yes. is giving California. If we're going to be honest, Butler technically lives in Maryland at the moment. Oh, don't bury the lead. Okay. Okay. How did she get away with that, Alex? So, according to the LA Times, you don't like to be appointed a senator, you don't have to be a resident at the moment of of California. Um, however, to to be elected senator, you do have to be a resident of California. The thing is that um Butler does have a residence in California and does plan to move back before she is sworn in to get her residency back in California. I just want to say, I mean, I'm rooting for everybody black. So I'm very much so happy with this election. I'm very much so happy that she feels, you know, multiple, she meets at the intersectionality of womanhood, LGBTQIA uh, plus community and the black community. So I'm very happy with this election. Girl, just move back. We cheering for you. And Alex, thank you so much for joining me today. I can't wait to see you again next week, okay? Thank you. Listen, I've missed you all so, so much. I promise I was so bored at home getting better, you know, wasn't able to eat, could barely sleep. It was terrible, okay? 
So I gotta make sure I give you guys a good goodbye today. What am I gonna say? Mm, that kind of rhymes. Okay, I'm gonna choose these good words from Beyonce. Be careful what you ask for, cause I just might comply. All right, see you tomorrow, girls. <laughs> I'm so happy to be back. <laughs>